What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're going to be jumping into the next one on our Netherlands journey. This is how does the Netherlands feed the world? This one should be interesting. I hope it's something informative. I hope it's a lot of stuff that we haven't learned yet that maybe we need to learn. Let's find out exactly how the Netherlands feeds the world. We know that they are... I forget, what was it, the second? Second largest or first largest exporter of damn fruits and vegetables. Come on now. They're obviously doing something right up there in the Netherlands. Let's jump in. Let's find out how they're feeding the world. Let's roll. Here we have the Netherlands. A beautiful, very flat country made up of windmills and tulip fields. When people think of the Netherlands economy, their mind goes straight to Amsterdam. Whether it be the coffee shops or recent headlines about post-Brexit financial... When they think about anything Netherlands related, unfortunately, it kind of goes to Amsterdam. Even in a lot of the videos that we've seen, it's all been Amsterdam or Holland related. If there's such a big push to teach people that there's more about the Netherlands than just Holland and just Amsterdam, then we got to start producing some more content about places other than those places. Because those are the places where every tourist goes to create their content. Like, we got to fight. We got to get some people into the outer nethers and get that sent in. Services. But in this video, we are going to explore Dutch agriculture, which has helped turn the economy of the Netherlands into the Silicon Valley for food. If I asked you, who do you think is the biggest food exporter in the European Union? It was the you biggest. France, Spain or Italy. That's what I answered before I researched this video. As you might have guessed from the title of this video, the answer is actually the Netherlands. The Dutch economy is the agricultural powerhouse of the European Union. And that title could perhaps stretch to the world for certain fruits or vegetables. Wow. The Netherlands is the second largest food exporter globally behind the United States. Yeah, what's second? If you compare the population of both countries, it's no surprise the USA is ahead. The truth is that agriculture in the Netherlands performs incredibly well and generate a lot of economic growth and productivity growth for the Dutch economy. So how did this happen, despite having a relatively low land mass compared to other large agricultural economies? Understanding this is the aim of this video, and if you appreciate the work that goes into these videos, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. A 100% along the way, if at any time you feel like you like it, make sure that you go over and show the original poster some love i'm gonna leave all of that stuff down inside of the description 100 percent, go like and subscribe to them as well let's go it costs you nothing and it can really help support the channel so why has the economy of the netherlands become something of an agricultural powerhouse typically as countries become more developed they move away from sectors like agriculture to heavy manufacturing and then eventually services the reason for this is due to an economic concept called opportunity cost. This is essentially the hidden cost of making one decision over another. For example, if you have a piece of land that is one hectare and you use it to grow potatoes, you might earn 7,000 or 8,000 euros. If instead you use that area to build a factory or an office, the return could be much higher. Well, the Netherlands has actually been a bit backwards in this aspect. Famous Dutch companies include Shell and Philips and the first stock exchange in the world was actually in the Netherlands. It wasn't until fairly recently that the Dutch economy started looking at ways to become a large agricultural producer and exporter. Now I know what you might be thinking. Agriculture in the European Union, it's got to be subsidised. You would be partially right, as the common agricultural policy is essentially just that. But compared to other prosperous EU countries, the Netherlands gets a much lower subsidy. The Dutch economy gets about a third of what Greece gets or a tenth wow. of what France gets. And when you consider this to one of the other countries I've covered before, Switzerland, it is clear that something else explains this. The answer as to how the Netherlands economy has become the garden of the world can be explained in one word, technology. That's the simple answer, but that doesn't explain why other countries can't keep up. After all, it's not as if Spain or France can't afford technology. And that's why we have to go back a bit further to understand why agriculture in the Netherlands was promoted as a sector. In the 1970s, the economy of the Netherlands was one of the most prosperous in Europe. Compared to the UK, the Netherlands was practically a paradise. Instead of rolling blackouts and constant strikes, the Netherlands economy was growing 
and dominating global markets in electronics and gas. However, there were some issues that started to appear in the Netherlands during this time. With market-leading firms growing at a rate quicker than the rest of the economy, it encouraged younger, more educated workers to move away from agriculture to well-paying sectors. This put Dutch agriculture under a lot of pressure, an issue made worse by the fact that Dutch farms can't really benefit from economies of scale. Unlike the USA, which has incredibly large farms, typically owned by a big corporate, the Netherlands had the opposite, which made large investments more risky. Another issue at this point is an economic concept called the Dutch disease. With sectors like natural gas bringing in large demand, the Dutch currency continued to strengthen. This made it even harder for Dutch farmers to compete with agriculture for other oh, European economies. Wow. So why didn't the Dutch government just give up on agriculture? After all, it wasn't that valuable to the economy of the Netherlands, and trade was becoming more open across the globe, meaning there wasn't a food security issue. Well, if the Dutch government was looking at it purely from an economic perspective, they might well have given up on it. But sometimes people and politics can get in the way of that. The good news is that the outcomes have been remarkably positive, but we will come back to those later. Farming associations in the Netherlands had a disproportionate amount of power. For example, farming associations essentially had an open door policy with the government, and they regularly took the opportunity to try and keep agriculture alive within the country. As the rest of the economy was developing around them, Dutch farmers were not willing to change from agriculture to one of the growing sectors. And given their political influence, the government needed to figure out a way to deal with this issue. Instead of giving up on agriculture, the Dutch government decided to double down on agriculture and decided that if Smart it was going to be part of the Netherlands economy, it was going to be a productive one. Since salaries couldn't be reduced or more land created, the only solution was to improve productivity. And that's where technology and research step in. More specifically, the University of Wagenagen entered the scene and became a key economic player. This university is to the Dutch economy what Stanford University is to Silicon Valley. Stanford University is not only a world leader in research, they also produce the best computer scientists in the world. These computer scientists then leave Stanford and go to work for Facebook, Apple or Google. Yep. For agriculture, this Dutch university takes up the mantle of world leader. And instead of being called Silicon Valley, the Netherlands has Food Valley. Many of you probably hadn't heard of this university. I certainly hadn't. But its role cannot be understated. It only works in the world of agriculture, and everything is geared towards producing the best research and the best workforce for the sector. They don't offer degrees in law or politics. It is wow. either biology, chemistry, or food science. That's They're awesome. also funded in a very different way to most universities, which stems from the fact that to make Dutch farming competitive, it needed to be productive. The funding structure for the university is made up of both public and private sector funding. In the last two decades, public sector funding for the university's research budget has doubled, aimed specifically at improving the economy of the Netherlands through something called Agritech. Over 25% of the funding then comes from the private sector, typically agricultural firms wanting to improve their own productivity. Look at this, this massive amount of greenhouses. Like legitimately, there's a lot of things that we're learning about the Netherlands that just blow my mind. Simple things like, hey, how can one, how can a small country, comparatively speaking, be doing so well overall? Most of the time, if you think about small countries compared to giant countries you would think it would be the other way around but we're learning that's not the case we've learned that's not the case that the dutch are a very innovative and adaptful people and they come up with all kinds of crazy inventions that the rest of the world actually needs so it makes to me it makes no sense there's something magical happening up in the Netherlands, the more people need to pay attention to. I feel like we need to look up there and maybe take away some examples that could potentially make America a way better place than it is now. Could help us become more self-sustainable. A whole bunch of different things that we could do. If only we would look around, if only we would realize that, hey, we're a little bit behind the times instead of just constantly thinking that we're the greatest country in the world. The university is being privatized. Nor does it mean that the research the university produces is hidden away, never to be seen again. It actually has a major benefit, which is that it allows the university to be connected to the business community in the region. And through a concept called the agglomeration effect, 
this has created an economic boom by working closely with agricultural businesses and helping them to boost the Dutch economy. It has encouraged more firms to set up in the area. This in turn leads to business support services like accountants or lawyers setting up shop, as well as cafes or restaurants as wages go up. Most importantly in this instance, it also encourages intelligent people to come and study at the university. The university is the most cited in this field and has incredibly close links with businesses. Whether you want to do research or become an entrepreneur, the university is the place to be for those interested in agriculture. The result is that 40% of the students and staff at the university are foreign, coming from every inch of the globe. For wow. someone like me, who can only speak one language, 40%, that's huge. The official language of the university is actually English. To give an example of what this actually means to people in real life, let's look at tomato growing in the Netherlands. The starting point is to understand that in natural Dutch conditions, growing tomatoes would be pretty challenging. Thankfully, through the research produced by the university, the Netherlands is a pioneer in LED technology and improving agricultural yields. This helps create a precisely controlled microclimate, which can be operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This has helped the Netherlands become a world leader. So it looks like some good tomatoes to me. But there's also a bigger piece to all of this. Economic growth and protecting the environment are often put side by side as things that are mutually exclusive. The Dutch tomato is an example that shows that this is not always true. In the USA, farmers need about 126 litres of water for every one kilo of tomatoes. In the Netherlands, farmers need just eight litres of water. Wow! To grow eight! Eight! We're talking about single digits here compared to my and lord! In both economic and environmental terms. Not only does the university help to produce the research, it also plays a key role in getting that research out there so that farmers can take advantage of it. What I didn't know was how quick technology changes within agriculture. And it's thanks to the university and the Dutch Agricultural Council that farmers can stay on top of that. After all, it's no good being a farmer and getting money from the common agricultural policy and then not knowing what to actually spend the money on. The Agricultural Council helps signpost farmers to the most up-to-date equipment for whatever crop they're trying to grow. They want to grow potatoes, they'll be told what machines to get. That's if awesome. they want to grow tulips, they'll be told what tech they need. The overall result is that Dutch agriculture is one of the most productive in the world. But from an environmental perspective, they reign supreme too. For example, antibiotics use is much lower. The same is true for pesticide usage. Water usage for their crops has fallen by close to 90% since the technology revolution began. And thankfully, being the open and trading nation that the Netherlands is, they are exporting this technology around the globe, which will hopefully have a similar positive impact elsewhere. Both the United Arab Emirates and Singapore have made large orders for Dutch agricultural technology. They're doing this to improve their food security, and I wouldn't be surprised if other rich growing economies do the same. It is a success story that goes under the radar when thinking about the Dutch economy. But the cheese I had for lunch is in part due to the agricultural revolution, and for that, I say thank you. Over to you then. Did you know before this video how strong Dutch agriculture was? Hell no. Were you surprised by the role of agriculture in the Netherlands economy? Let me know in the comment section down below. And whilst you're down there, make sure you check out the description where you'll find freebies, including free Bitcoin, if you use my affiliate links. I'd really appreciate it if you could click that like and subscribe button before you go. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. There yeah. you have it, ladies and gentlemen. How does the Netherlands feed the world? Very, very interesting information. I'm glad we got to learn why now instead of just showing us that you do it i like to know the behind the scenes i like to know things like hey look at all of these damn greenhouses and the technology that we have that no that you are so many years behind on americans americans wake up pay attention to the dutch if you guys enjoyed it definitely go show the original post with some love i'm gonna leave his channel down inside of the description hit the like button if you liked it the dislike button if you disliked it check out one of my other videos up there subscribe right here if you want to see more content, possibly your content. Until the next one, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. I love you to the moon and back. Peace.